President Trump is set to visit the UK next week, and one of the top priorities of Her Majesty's government is apparently keeping Trump away from Nigel Farage, the leader of Brexit. According to the Daily Telegraph, which quotes an unnamed government source, British officials have told our White House that our president cannot meet with Farage during his visit. The newspaper calls that demand, quote, a red line for the British government. In other words, an absolute demand. Downing Street denies that that ban exists. Nigel Farage himself joins us tonight to clear this up. Nigel, thank you for coming on. Thank you. A red line, our president banned from meeting you. Can that be true? Oh, yes, absolutely. I mean, don't forget, the establishment in Britain hate me. They see me as the man that forced the Brexit referendum upon them, helped uh, get it through. Uh, they now have to implement something they don't believe in. And worse still, when Donald Trump becomes the president, you know, and I was the only British politician that said he was the right thing, not just for America, but for the Western world, uh, Trump tweeted, wouldn't Farage be good? as the British ambassador in Washington. And ever since that day, they've been paranoid about my relationship with the president. But you know, when you think about it, who on earth is some official in 10 Downing Street to tell the US president who he should and shouldn't meet? I'm sorry to say, but it paints my government ahead of this visit in a very bad light. It certainly does. Uh, do you know if the president is abiding by this? Do you have any plans to meet with him when he comes <laughs> to your country? Well, look, um, let's be honest about this. Relations between number 10 Downing Street and the White House have not gone as they ought to have done over the last 18 months, two years. Um, I would not wish in any way to cause any embarrassment for the president coming over here. So I won't push it, but Tucker, if he wants to see me for a cup of coffee, I'll go and see him. I wonder if your government is aware that it's on the wrong side of history as it's unfolding in Europe. Every other country in Europe, even Western Europe, nationalism is reawaking as people remember why borders are important, national identity is real, et cetera, et cetera. The UK government doesn't seem to be aware that this is happening. No, it's very odd. I mean, Brexit was an earthquake in British politics, but the problem was the day after the People's Revolt, the power was handed straight back to those who'd opposed the referendum and the result in the first place. So we're in a very awkward place. But, you know, I've spent this week in Strasbourg uh, with the parties that are now governing Italy, uh, with the party that is now governing Austria. Um, I've met the Polish Prime Minister who says, look, please, Brussels, don't treat us like the communists used to. The revolution is sweeping right through Europe, and the British at the moment are impervious to it. But you know what? That situation can't hold. Yeah, I mean, so how long will you, I mean, your country is basically run by a, a small group of very rich finance people and immigrants. Uh, the, the power is in London, right? But oh, the power is in London. Yeah. Right. But yeah. how long can that continue to be the case? Well, I mean, the promise of Brexit is mm. that people outside of London have a voice in this too. Do you think they will? Well, Brexit proved that outside of big business, big banks and big politics, people can have their say and they can win. And right now we have, I think, I'm being honest with you, the worst prime minister I've seen in my lifetime who is frustrating Brexit. If we go on with this course of action in this country, then Brexit will be not the last earthquake, but the first earthquake. More change will come in the end. People's views will be heard. You know, Trump is part of this. Italy is part of this. Hungary is part of this. Austria is part of this. Do you know what, Tucker? Freedom is coming back to the Western world. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to pretend it's a democracy, you have to kind of pay attention to the people who yeah. live in your country. It seems to me. Absolutely. Nigel Farage, thank you very, very much. Great thank to see you. you. Thank you.